All right, we are at TV Lions Comic Con Studio with the cast and creator of Outlander. Welcome, you guys. Yay! Yay. Yay. Um, season three. So excited. Voyager is my favorite book in the series for the print shop scene alone, but all the all the stuff that goes on. What happens in the print shop? Oh, I know. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna just tell me everything, and then you don't have to do anything else today, so you're good. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. So in the book, um, this is very much a story of Claire and Jamie being apart for a mm -hmm. long time. You guys shot a lot apart this season, right? Um, and for Jamie, it's a very physical season. Lots mm -hmm. of bad physical things happen to him. When are they not? <laughs> I was going to say, is that, is, how does it compare? Diana. <laughs> how does that compare to season, the shooting of season one for you, Sam? Yeah, I mean, we were kept apart as much as possible. They had us in different uh, rooms. They would let us talk to each other. Yeah. Um, they took away our phones. Our phones. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it was uh, obviously at the end of season two is, is pretty much where we pick up uh, season three and um, at the Battle of Culloden and obviously in the book you don't get to see it but I think Ron and, and, and everyone and the writers were you know um, we wanted to, to reward the, the sort of fans and the viewers with that but uh, we spend a long time apart and um, we get to see them both live out their lives separately and trying to move on and move forward without the person that they love and mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually Claire does sort of reappear <laughs> and there's a lot of egg white, yeah. And there's a lot of <laughs> So let's talk about oh. the egg white since you brought it up. We better explain that. No, there's, there's, uh, we were discussing earlier, there's some, some vomiting that happens in the show and uh, we use egg whites for that. And you only, vomit. Only for that. <laughs> right. And Diana, you were saying you get seasick. This is this yes. is based on your own experience. Yes, that's why Jamie responds to water the way that he does. Oh, <laughs> oh if any if you have any experience that is similar to his, I feel so sorry for you because it's such a rough those are rough passages to read, and that sounds like to act rough as well. To play as well. <laughs> yeah. Frank is much more fleshed out here. Their their time together, it seems even from the trailer, we see a lot more of them together. Um it's very easy to be anti-Frank, especially when there's such a such a great jam. I didn't say I was anti-Frank. I said, but um, it seems like, especially in the trailer, there's a lot of there's a lot of back and forth in those 20 years um, in terms of their feelings for each other. Can you guys speak a little bit to that relationship, playing those moments? Well, it's a relationship of great frustration. You know, Claire has lost the love of her life, but especially in that time, I mean, Frank is in some ways such a generous person he's accepted that she's been in love with somebody else he's accepted that she's been away and that she's carrying another man's child and yet he offers to take her back and, and raise this child so it's a very honorable thing he does and it's so hard for claire to to rise to that occasion and to and to sort of let go of her past and be able to meet him where he wants to be, you know, in this in this loving relationship. So it's so fraught with all of this complicated emotion. She can see what a good man he is, but she just can't give him what he needs and, and vice versa. And so it's it's really tragic, I guess, in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we get a chance in the, these first three episodes of season three to sort of, uh, yeah, sort of peek inside um, what, what happens to that marriage and what happens to Frank and Claire in Boston when they move mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And obviously the arrival of, of Brie <laughs> and um, yeah, and um, it, it was, yeah, it was really kind of um, exciting to both sort of uh, see them age and grow together and also grow apart and it's you know it's the sort of classic kind of Frank and Claire territory of sort of lots of conflicting and complicated emotions a lot of love but uh, you know th there's a sort of inherent kind of disconnect uh, mm -hmm. uh, there which they're constantly kind of trying to repair or live around mm -hmm. for the sake of various reasons you know that sort of that sort of imperfect compromised love which is what that relationship kind of is a, a meditation on really. Yeah. I think one of the beautiful things in the book is that you see, I mean they were together for 20 years so there had to be love there yep. and there had to mm -hmm. be times mm -hmm. that they were able to make it work and you know they really focused on the rearing of their daughter and that mm -hmm. was one of the things we really wanted to have in the show as mm -hmm. well is that kind of where have they been able to find compromise and where have they been able to meet on common ground and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, find a bit of light and shade. You know? yeah. yeah, I first read the books when I was in my 20s mm -hmm. and um, having reread them now that I'm older and have a child, the letter that Claire writes for, for Brianna and, and not only that, the choice to leave 
your child, knowing you probably will never see that person again, resonated so much more. Um, is it fleshed out? Is there an actual scene in the show? Is it still a letter? What can you guys tell me about that interaction before Claire goes back? This sort of, we were talking about this before, weren't we? The kind of mother-daughter role reversal in that scene. So we kind of played it that, you know, Claire's almost a little insecure, that she'll go back and Jamie might have moved on or mm -hmm. feel a little differently. Um, so there was kind of, we played that moment, didn't we, where Bree's sort of saying, like, yeah. I have to let you go kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. I mean, just... I, I think, you know, there's a couple of really great scenes, uh, you know, between Brie and Claire where it's, there's, that relationship has been so fraught for mm -hmm. so long and, and finally, you know, truth will heal many wounds and when you're keeping secrets you'll always have a barrier between you so it's really beautiful to see them finally be yeah. able to remove that barrier and, and see each other properly yeah. for the first time mm -hmm. um but yeah it, it's it's i think it's a little different in the show right yeah. but yeah. it's well, you know it's letter also, issue it's, i mean you can't just stand right. there <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we end up, yeah we end up with a conversation yeah but also it's not that you know it's not all claire finds out jamie's still alive and runs away back right she does mm -hmm. she's prepared to make that sacrifice to brianna and say you know i will stay that investigation also kind of underlies the roger and brianna relationship coming mm -hmm. together yeah what can you tell people who are fans of that relationship in the book is it does it play out similarly are there a lot of changes relatively similarly i mean their relationship in the book moves quite quickly doesn't it you know mm -hmm. they sort of meet and Roger's a little more into it initially than Brianna is, mm -hmm. but they still, it, it moves quite smoothly. I think in the season we've sort of played it a little bit more that kind of every time they do come together, this information brings them together for their love of history, but then equally the same measure, it kind of tears them apart because I think Roger is a reminder for Brianna, you know, about everything that happened. And I think she just needs that gap to find herself by herself without Roger being a reminder of it. So it's kind of mainly about the... Claire Brianna relationship for mm. a while, isn't it? Quick speed round to wrap things up. Um, do we have any scenes set in caves, Mr. Hewen? I feel like I spent most of the last year in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> That's my personal life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. There's a. Uh, I think every episode this season is very different, and uh, in their life, you know, we span a, a long period of time uh, in the show. You know, there's a 20 year period almost. You know, with the, these two apart. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Jamie does have very. Uh, different guises, different different places, and uh, one of them may be a man cave. A man cave. <laughs> Might he be wearing a dun-colored bonnet in that man cave? He may be um, that he can't get all this hair under. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, the, the picture that was released, there was... There's a lot of hair going I, I did, on. I did see yeah. some comments, I'm like, that defeats the purpose. We did, we did actually <laughs> try to get the... <laughs> we get the try, try to get the hair under the bonnet. Yeah. It looked like a rustic hair. So. Uh, and very quickly, just to wrap up, uh, in the book, Diana, you write that Jamie faints rather gracefully for such a large man when they first come back together. Uh, can you tell me, uh, Katrina, was it a graceful fall? He's a rather a large man. <laughs> yeah. um, did you ever do ballet? I did, yeah. Oh, no, I did, yeah. I did, yeah. A couple of times. Well, there you go. That's your answer. Fantastic. Fantastic. I do, I think, in first position.